realizing that, oh, we've got two top fuelers up at the line. So I'm getting ready. I'm kind of like burping her a little bit. Those fuelers take off. She jumps on me and bam, vomit all over my shoulder (laughs) in the media center. It's like, honey, this is going to be your life. This is motorsports, baby. Get used to it. (laughs) Hey, that's we should have caught that on social media. (laughs) That would have been great. Right. (laughs) Right, Grant. My apologies, we haven't gotten you in sooner, but good reason this week with the announcement of Tony Stewart coming in as a two-car team owner. Let's start from the inception. When did you see this come about that uh, the multi-time NASCAR champion, team owner and driver uh, was going to get involved in the NHRA? Well, there was some talk about it last year. Um, Kind of an interesting story was last year in Dallas um, when we were there in October. And um, Tony uh, Tony Stewart set up a meeting with myself and uh, Brad Gerber, who's our VP of sales and new business, and Ned Walliser, uh, who's our VP of competition in, in tech. Um, Tony set up the meeting, uh, I believe it was Saturday morning of the, uh, the uh, Dallas race and we went in and, uh, you know, he really wanted to learn, you know, more about the business side of the uh, uh, the sport. Uh, we did a call with Brett Frude, um, which I think you guys all know. Brett is an uh, uh, incredible individual, incredibly smart, understands the NASCAR business model very well, but really wanted to learn more about the NHRA business model. And so we spent some time uh, talking to him and, and it's... <laughs> somewhat of a funny story, but it, it tells you who Tony Stewart is as a person. You know, he came in and found out that Ned uh, uh, was in charge of, charge of tech. And uh, for the next hour and a half, he had Ned backed up in a corner um, <laughs> talking to him about uh, tech issues and how to go faster and how to win championships while Brad and I were on the phone with Brett talking about, uh, you know, kind of the business side of the sport. Uh, but it tells you uh, something special about Tony Stewart. I mean, he's a he's a champion, uh, and he got there through hard work and determination. And uh, it's about winning. And um, you know, this announcement that he put together is pretty exciting. I, I know that the NHRA is excited, or all of our stakeholders are. And and I said in the press conference, probably the only people that aren't excited about it um, are the competitors. They're going to have to race against uh, his team, and because uh, we know. Uh, we know his background in racing. He's uh, he's there to win. Well, what does this mean for the overall competitor count and for team ownership in general? Because some people are speculating, and of course, this is just what social media people do. They're speculating, oh no, Don Schumacher is eventually going to leave the sport in a couple of years. Antron's got a team now. Tony Stewart is buying some of Schumacher's equipment. Is Don Schumacher planning to stick around for a while? Because the more teams you have overall, the better. Right. And, and that is true. I mean, we, we want more teams. We think that's better, uh, better show for the fans. Um, you know, I've been talking to Don quite a bit the last few months. And, uh, you know, I do believe with the recent announcement on uh, uh, when this past Wednesday, Tony Schumacher's coming back um, shoot for his ninth championship. And, uh, you know, there's some other talks uh, that Don uh, may field a, a few other cars there. But, you know, it's it's. Um, you know, really, it's, it's it's a positive. You know, Don Don is incredible owner. I mean, he he knows how to run a business, and I think he is really uh, taught. Um, you know, uh, Antron, which is great news. Antron is going to go off on his own, and and now you have Tony Stewart and Tony Stewart and Don work together, and, and still are working together on uh, sharing ideas. And but you know, it's it's kind of this uh, you know changing of this culture within the NHRA of where you've had all these mega teams and now you're kind of going back, you know, the cycles coming back around where you have individual teams. And I think that's going to be good for the sport. Um, you know, you've got Justin Ashley in there and you've got some others, uh, Josh Hart, who's coming in and running incredible. Um, you know, I think, I think people are seeing it. We're seeing it. You guys are seeing it. Our fans are seeing it. Um, you know, being in, in Bristol earlier this week, uh, in Charlotte, you know, there's a buzz out there and there's a buzz for 
2022. Uh, people are excited to, to, for Pomona to get here. I mean, we still got a lot, a lot of racing to, to go here in 2021. Championships are uh, up to be had, and uh, it's going to be exciting. But there's a lot of talk over in Bristol this past week, um, this past weekend about uh, the excitement around 2022. It certainly is there. I mean, all over the internet, even all over the world, people seeing these new announcements and seeing your TV ratings go higher. Mm -hmm. It's it just seems like everything is on a positive trajectory. Will we, with maybe some added money coming into the series because of new announcements, will we get back to seeing maybe pro stock the full season, pro stock motorcycle the full season, or are we overall content with how each of the different series inside NHRA are being run? No, I think we're, you know, I think we're pretty good. Pro Stock has done a great job. Um, you know, kudos to Richard Freeman and Greg Anderson. They've done a tremendous job with their engine programs. You know, we talked a few, few years back going from 24 to 18. I think that really helped, um, you know, the participation in that category. We have a, a, a young generation coming in there, um, and w which is great, you know, with Stan Field and, and Koretsky and McGehee and, and, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy with where that category sits. Um, you know, we've had some discussions with the pro mod, uh, categories to, to, you know, boost car count there, but I think things overall, um, are, you know, I'm seeing a lot of momentum, a lot of interest. We're talking, we're hearing a lot of teams coming back. Um, and I, I personally, I think a lot of it has to do with the racing community coming in back in 2020. And not to talk about, you know, that season, you know, I think it's one that most of us want to forget, but I, it, I think it's important to reflect and go back and talk about how everybody came together in 2020, you know, from the fans, hmm. uh, race teams, track sponsors, you know, all the NHRA employees, the track employees all pulled together to keep the NHRA um, very relevant. And I think, I believe 2020, and I knew it would pay dividends if we came together and we did that it would pay dividends in 2021. And even you're seeing it going into 2022. Um, there's a lot of excitement. Um, the economics of the, of the sport are much stronger today. And, uh, but I, I think we're in a good place. I, you know, 2022, we have uh, 22 events. Uh, I love the schedule. We're getting great feedback from fans and, our race teams on the on the logistics of that schedule, and um, I think I think we're in a very good place moving forward. Glenn Com Glenn Cromwell, I'm sorry, Glenn Glenn Cromwell, no, okay. NHRA president. Let me know if I'm wrong in this uh, perception. Most of the teams in the NHRA, it seems to me, when you go through the paddock, the teams are owned and run by competitors or former competitors. It seems like this is kind of a, a groundbreaking, or at least a change that Tony Stewart from the NH from the NASCAR is coming into the NHRA. He's never competed in the NHRA, doesn't plan on, as far as we know, plan on competing in the NHRA. Is this a perception that's wrong, or is this a, a kind of a groundbreaking thing to have a non-competitor come in as a team owner? Well, I mean, it's, it's a little groundbreaking. I mean, I think having Tony come in um, is a big deal. And, and, you know, we're, we're hearing that a lot of other people are starting to take a look at it. And I think, I think the big changing factor of why people are looking in is, is what we just talked about is the success and the momentum that NHRA is having in 2021. And, and I think a lot of people out there believe the sport is going upwards and that's important. You know, if people are going to invest in the sport, they have to believe in the property and the direction direction it's going. And we're we're hearing that, we're seeing that, um, and I think you're going to see more of it coming. And I and and there are some big announcements coming here in the near future. Oh, oh dude! Cromwell, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm not going to talk about them today. Yes, you are. No, you no, no. Out here, you got to give us a chance. You tell us a little bit what's going on. <laughs> now, there's, uh, you know, I think, I think, I think what you see this this week, you know, you had uh, Schum Schumacher on Wednesday. 
Uh, you know, I had Tony Stewart on Thursday, uh, you know, as part of a press conference on Friday with uh, Toyota stepping up with the Capco boys and Steve Torrance, you know, three-time champion, you know, aligning with, with that team. Um, you know, it's, 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 the, I, I will say this, the next uh, few months, uh, you will be hearing a lot uh, from the NHRA and, in uh, the surrounding community. Okay, hold on, though. No, wait, wait a minute, Grant. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no. no. Well, I get all three of you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, look at them. They're, they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> this Toyota announcement is, I think, is huge. Not only does it bring another championship team into the Toyota tent, but it's a chance for automakers who don't make top fuel cars to sell in the in the showroom or funny cars for that matter to sell in the showroom but it's a chance for them to uh, all to show off their technology uh, their name the, how they're involved in what uh, their potential customers are doing uh, is there a chance that maybe somebody like Ford who has kind of been missing from the NHRA or Chrysler that might come back into the NHRA. Is there a chance that they might follow Toyota's lead and uh, get back in the program? Well, I can tell you that, uh, you know, we have, we have all four, you know, we, we have Toyota, we have Ford, we have Dodge, uh, and we have Chevrolet all in our sport. And I, I know talking with all four of them, um, they're incredibly uh, excited about where the, where the, uh, the sport's going. Um, you know, we're talking with all four of them at all different levels. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we're, we're getting into the electric business, uh, as I'm sure all of you, two of, two of you are shaking your head up and down. So yes. Come on, Kenny. Kenny Kenny's probably going to shake his head. No, I can't believe he's bringing up electric, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a piece of our business. And I think all, all of you would agree, you know, we, you know, this, this sport was designed and, and, and it's a platform for people to come out and race uh, for participants to uh, test uh, the technology and speed. And, and, you know, we've seen our world change um, a lot recently, but um, you know, electric cars are, are here and uh, it's important for us to provide a space for them to race. And, uh, you know, we've talked to a lot of the manufacturers um, regarding that side of the business. But yeah, I, I, you know, to answer your question, um, I'm, I, I expect to see uh, more involvement from uh, from the other three. I will read between those lines and assume that <laughs> some manufacturers are going to be announced <laughs> before the end of the year. Well, see, the one thing is, Kenny, as we started, you know, Kenny knows my history and, you know, I've been here 20 plus years. And the one thing I have learned is I have to be careful and, and I have to be confidential <laughs> and, and I have to be politically what? correct. <laughs> yeah, that's Glenn. That's Glenn. Glenn learned the hard way. Yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we'll get back to the video interview in just a moment, but with high gas prices holding steady, it might be time for you to check out Lucas Oil Fuel Treatment and Injector Cleaner. It's a blend of oils and additives that contain no solvents. It increases power and fuel mileage that keeps your engine operating at maximum efficiency. Are you kidding me? It's like a tune-up in a bottle. Just add it to every fill-up of that snappy car of yours. And of course, it's as simple as... You get it. Now, back to the interview. Well, I want to go back to you saying a lot of people are taking a look at the NHRA. We've seen in NASCAR, we've seen in IndyCar, and every once in a while in Supercross, you'll see some of Hollywood cross over. You'll see some NFL players or, or owners cross over and kind of get a little bit of an ownership piece. Mm -hmm. Is NHRA, I mean, I think NHRA is beyond ready for that. Can we start to see some of that in drag racing as well? Uh, there's some conversations going on. Really? Um, you know, I, I will say, you know, it's from, from the team level and even from our PR social media level, I mean, it's a big initiative for us. Um, as we call them influencers, um, to bring them to the races and, and make them part of our sport, get them engaged in our sport. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of conversations going on in the pits and, um, Good. you know, I think the teams, as all of you know, and you guys know all of our, a lot of our teams, uh, they're well connected to, um, Hollywood, uh, the music business. 
So, yeah, I, I do expect to see uh, some of that uh, type of involvement uh, flow into the NHRA here shortly. Glenn, if, if Pixar gets involved and puts out a snappy animated movie on the NHRA, will you promise me that the car is not a freaking snail? Oh, stop <laughs> it. IndyCar and a snail. I don't, I ha, I, listen, okay? Pro, promise me a snail is not going to go 320 miles an hour. <laughs> but I, I, I think you guys know, you know, we, I mean, I, I love, I love the other, you know, sports properties. I love motors. You know, I love yeah. all motorsports. I do. I came from the supercross side of things. I love NASCAR. I love IndyCar, but you know, I mean, NHRA is, I mean, we're, we're, we're the fastest sport in the world. We're the most powerful sport in the world. Um, I don't think that would ever happen. Um, you, 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 you know what we sell and uh, we sell speed and power in uh, and access uh, for our fans to touch our drivers and uh, um, you know I, that's that's not uh, we're, we're not here to go slow at all or portray well, that we would go slow well hold on though when you when you brought up the other series again when we had Graham Rahal on before he and Courtney got married they were apparently talking to of course I'm talking about Courtney Force Graham Rahal IndyCar driver Courtney Force uh -huh. you know in NHRA they were talking to apparently Sonoma Raceway at the time about maybe getting a combined weekend event together can that be something in the future for NHRA whether it's NHRA and IndyCar together or NASCAR and NHRA or Supercross and NHRA is that something that's possible? You know, we've talked to we've talked to SMI about some of those uh, those thoughts. You know, and I think I think what you're seeing, um, you know, that that motorsports are pulling you know much more together than they ever have. Yes. You know, that we see that um, all of our platform. You know, maybe going back ten years ago, we all were you know kind of worked separate. We had mm -hmm. you know drag race NHRA drag racing fans, and you had NASCAR had their fans and. You know, everybody was kind of like, hey, you know, we were marketing almost against each other. And and I think there's a lot of conversations happening today that, you know, for uh, for motorsports as a general to grow, uh, we really all need to come together. And, you know, we work with, uh, you know, we're part of ACUS and, you know, we talk to Steve and, and Jay, Jay over at IndyCar. And, and obviously, I know the people over at Supercross and uh, we talk to them a lot, uh, a lot more than we ever have in the past. And I think that's... That's how things are changing today. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Lee Cromwell, awesome. president of NHRA. There's something that's always been in the back of my mind, and Kenny and Crash are tired of hearing me talk about it, so I'm going to dump it <laughs> in here. The, the NHRA for years has promoted uh, the technology and the 330 miles an hour in under four seconds. That's massively huge, obviously, but over 21 years, we found that some of the best driver personalities are in the NHRA garage. And is there going to be an effort to promote the personalities over the technology? Because I don't think, uh, even as a fan, sometimes it's difficult to tell the difference between 250 and 350. So, but the personalities you can relate to immediately. Is that a, a concern on your part? Well, um, I, I think it's our, one of our number one initiatives. Um, I'm a firm believer that uh, our fans come to see, you know, you know, we're, we're fast, we're powerful, uh, you know, great, great experience at NHRA, but they come to see the stars. That's what they're coming. They want to see the stars of our sport. And, you know, for us, we, we are working tremendously hard on what we call secondary programming. Um, you know, obviously Fox uh, has come in and, you know, signed a multi-year extension with us through 2026. And that's great. Um, they do a tremendous job of covering the race and they do stories and they do interviews, but we need to take it to the next level on some secondary programming where we get with, you know, Netflix or Amazon prime or, you know, a program like John forces, you know, on A&E or driving force where you have more time to dig, deeper into the storylines and the personal side of our drivers because i think we all know you know as as viewers at home you really want to know you want you kind of want the behind the scenes you know, you you want to know who these people are and um you know we will um you know we're working on that and um i'll leave it at that
<laughs> like you said, the next Maybe few months. Will come back to you see. You guys are very good at trying to get something out of me, um, but uh, no, we we do uh, mm-hmm. we do realize that's a very important piece of our sport, and um, uh, we'll, we'll we'll be going down that road shortly. Good. Great. Glenn Cromwell, president of NHRA, joining us here in the Freak Nation. One thing that, uh, whether it's NASCAR, IndyCar, NHRA, Supercross, it's it's maintaining your audience and growing your audience. And we've we've talked about that for 21 years. And how do we how do we get those audiences that don't typically uh, look towards the NHRA that can't fathom what uh, you know 10,000 horsepower is? What are some of the initiatives that you and your crew plan to do moving forward to bring that age? down a little bit in the nhra well uh TikTok, social yeah. media <laughs> facebook <laughs> well obviously uh the way people consume content is a lot differently today and you know that kenny um you know and we're we're, we're investing heavily there in that space uh growing that area uh, making sure that we get content out uh, short content we do we do realize people don't want to sit and watch you know 10 minute videos. They, they, they want action. They want it quick, uh, which I do believe our sport, uh, separates it, separates itself from other sports that we are, you know, we're short burst, uh, you know, we get a, a new run every, you know, minute, uh, you know, some of these sports that you see, whether it's major league baseball, you know, trying to shorten the game because the attention span is differently, but, um, um, you know, uh, we're focusing heavily there, but I think the one thing that that we don't talk enough about at the NHRA is our youth programs, mm-hmm. and I, we have a lot of youth programs, and in 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 people don't know about them. We we have a youth and education program uh, where we bring in uh, junior, senior, and first year college kids. Uh, a lot of them Votech, but uh, you know we talk about uh, careers, STEM based program. Um, and we will bring in 5,000 kids right over here to Pomona uh, every year uh, and introduce them to our sport. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an incredible program. Others have tried it. Ours has been in existence for 30 years. Uh, Terry Vance came in a couple years ago. We developed a, a job platform for people to get jobs in our, in our, in our space. Uh, people want to get jobs at NHRA or at our racetracks. Uh, we of course have a junior drag racing series uh, from you know starting at five years old all the way up to 16. Uh, we have a junior street program where um, someone that uh, is looking to get their license but maybe 13, 14, 15 can drive down the drag strip with their parents. Um, you know we have kids that come in for free, uh, 12 and under. So you know I think the NHRA uh, is really hitting all the areas of of youth and teens looking at the future um and of course uh putting our content in places that they're viewing you know we know that they're you know my kids i have two kids i have a 15 and a 20 year old and uh i will tell you about 90 percent of their time they're 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 looking at their phone and uh, we need to be in that space so are you saying glenn cromwell has a TikTok account Damn. no i don't so don't be going <laughs> <laughs> come on well, Glenn, I, I think you know that we've been big fans of the NHRA, and we've been critics as well. But one of the things, and, and Statman lightly touched on it, was many years ago there was a uh, there was your your NHRA guide that came out. You had Angel Sampe, you had an African American on that guide, and then of course the typical white guy thrown on there. But my point is this: is that the diver- the diversity in the NHRA has always been there, whether it's Latin, African American, and, and others. That's that's been an appeal for those that get it. And the, the more ways that you can promote that, you've got multiple time champions that are, that are African-Americans, that are women, that not a lot of people know about, which is just extremely badass when it comes to sports. No, I, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes the media takes it for granted because, because we are so diverse. Uh, but we're extremely proud of, of the diversity in our in our sport. Uh, in fact, we we have a marketing program that we started in 2019, um, and you know, kind of got lost in 2020 because we were all busy with uh, uh, the pandemic. But uh, it's called Speed for All, um, 
and really it's exactly what it is. It's speed for all. It's a very inclusive program, you know, whether it's racers, participants, fans, sponsors, um, you know, we open our arms to everybody and uh, it is something we're extremely proud of. And, you know, and we are the one sport where women, right. Compete against men and win championships, you know, versus like, you know, college basketball or the WNBA, you know, they, they compete against each other, but they never put, you know, women come in and win, you know, Brittany force, you know, Erica Enders. I mean, is she incredible or what? Mm -hmm. I mean, she, I mean, being in that pro sock category, I mean, she's taken out some of the best of the best and, uh, you know, she's, um, she's on, uh, you know, Greg's heels right now, um, you know, going for another championship for her. So, now we're we're extremely proud of it, and we continue to push it. And uh, I love our Speed for All uh, campaign because uh, I think it fits us perfectly. It's badass, Glenn Cromwell here in the Freak Nation. You you doing all right, man? You're not sweating bullets coming in the Freak Nation again, bud? No, I'm okay. I'm actually kind of cold. It's it's cold in our office. It's cool <laughs> here in California today. <laughs> Well, again, man, we're, we're proud of what you've done, what you continue to do. And uh, we're happy to be one of those flying the flag, man. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys are great. And, um, you know, you, you, Kenny, I've watched you for years. And, you know, so you, you guys always have a special <laughs> part in our heart here, you know, because I, I know, I mean, you and I've talked. You've always had NHRA drag racing. I, mean, I know that that runs deep for you. And I know you cover all motorsports. And I respect that. But, uh I know you love NHRA, and and uh, I'm glad that uh, that I'm on here today. It's been a long time, and uh, uh, it's glad to be you know kind of pushing out the the great news on the NHRA. And the one thing I do want to say, and I didn't talk about it, so I want to thank you know Marcus Lomonas, you know Camping World came in at a critical oh, time yes. for us, right. and you know kudos to Marcus Lomonas. I mean that guy um, stepping up, uh, you know in 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 2020. Uh, you know, we're sitting in the middle of running 11 events. You know, everybody's trying to get their sport going. And this guy comes in and invests in our sport. And, you know, he's he's with us for many years. And uh, I love what he does on social media, man. He can uh, he can get things moving quick. Yeah. Glenn, I bet you didn't think and I'm, I'm jumping in here, Kenny. We already said goodbye, but <laughs> I bet you didn't think that some part in your professional world that TikTok was going to be one of the most important things you'll say. <laughs> <laughs> when, 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 when my kids first told me about TikTok, I'm like, is that like a joke? It's, is that like a tic tac? Is that something I'm supposed to, to put in my mouth or something? But yeah, like TikTok, I mean, come on. But I'll tell you, a lot of people watch it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, Jeffrey Young, who, who Kenny, I know you've talked to. Um, I don't think you've met Jeffrey. Jeffrey joined us uh, about three years ago, uh, came over from PBR. Um, you know, he was a VP for for Sean and, and the guys over there. But mm -hmm. uh, he's really, you know, he's put in HRA on TikTok. And, uh, you know, you're, you're going to see more of us on social media. We we hired uh, uh, another social media person just about four months ago. And uh, this young gentleman is uh, is doing great. So, um, no, it's, we're, we're, we're in a good place. We got a lot of things uh, clicking on all cylinders for sure. Buddy, no oil downs, baby. Yeah, no, oil downs. no, got it. <laughs> no oil downs. My goodness, this is awesome, Glenn. Uh, let's don't wait another 20 years to get no. you back to Freak Nation. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back. Let me know when you're gonna come out. When you're gonna come out, you're gonna come out to Pomona. I think Pomona, either listen. You know what it's like to have a seven and a half, almost eight year old. It's no I excuses, Kenny. I, no listen, excuses. it's not yeah. about me anymore. You know, when we started this thing, it was all about me. Screw stat and crash. It's all about me. Now it's all about my seven-year-old. <laughs> well, the good news, so you guys live in Phoenix, right? right? So the great news is we're coming back to Phoenix uh, in February at Wild Horse Pass. So we'll right. be there. We'll, you know, we're going to be back in uh, Seattle on the Western Swing up at uh, Pacific Raceways, which is great news. We'll be back in Richmond. You know, these are some of these tracks that, uh, you know, that we didn't, unfortunately, uh, we did not go to uh, – in 2020 but uh you know it's uh it's gonna be a great year and and you better come out no excuses if i don't right. see in phoenix so Good hold point. on though let's let's just remind the freak nation henley our daughter who is now seven and a half 
her very first race, she was six weeks old, mm -hmm. her very first race, <laughs> it was NHRA in Phoenix, and I'm in the media center, and yes. no, I wasn't breastfeeding her, I had a bottle with her, <laughs> and, but she did just finish her bottle, and I wasn't realizing that, oh, we've got two top fuelers up at the line, so I'm getting ready, I'm kind of like burping her a little bit, those fuelers take off, she jumps on me, and bam, vomit all over my shoulder <laughs> in the media center, it's like... Honey, this is going to be your life. This is motorsports, baby. Get used to it. <laughs> hey, that's we should have caught that on social media. <laughs> right? That would have right? been great, right? I know. Right, Grant. <laughs> yeah, there's the TikTok power, right the there. power of NHRA. Hey, look, she pooped on uh, Alexis DeJoria at the time, and Alexis yeah. won the damn race. And yeah. so Alexis has been trying to get Hannah to poop on her uh, from this point forward. So it's, I she think we'll stay, with, we'll stay with the vomiting Kenny on social media. We won't go down the other one. Hey, if it's magic poop, whatever works, right? It's driver superstitions. Yeah, it is. All right, Glenn, uh, enough goodbyes, man. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank See you. you man. Have a great day. You got it. Take care. Bye now.